Setting up the KVM on your LAN can either be really tricky or really simple. The KVMs don't have DHCP and they come programmed with a static IP of 192.168.1.10. So if this IP is within your router's range, the process will be really simple and you can skip to step three. If your IP scheme is in a completely different range like we have here in this building, these are the steps that you're gonna take. First, you're gonna find an open IP in your router's current range. Then you're gonna connect the KVM via a computer and then finally use that computer to program the KVM's new static IP. To find an open IP location, you can do it in a couple different ways. You can either log into your router or you can use an app like Advanced IP Scanner that we have here. Now, we already know that our IP scheme is 10.1.20, so we ran a scan from .1 to 255. I'm not gonna do it here because it's gonna take too long. And we found that 10.1.20.250 is an open location for us to use. Now, keep in mind, that's for our particular situation. Yours may be completely different, so don't follow this verbatim, just follow the process. Now that we know our new static IP, the next step is to connect the KVM to a laptop so we can program the KVM. And to do that, we're gonna use an ethernet connection here, and we're gonna connect it directly to the KVM's LAN port to our laptop. Now, our laptop does not have a direct ethernet port, so we have this little adapter here. And we need to get the laptop to talk to the KVM, so we're gonna program an IP for the laptop that's within the KVM's current scheme. So we're gonna right click and open network settings and change adapter options. Now we're connected to ethernet, so right click this, go to properties, and TCP IPv4, and here we're gonna program in the static IP. Now we can't do dot 10 because that's a KVM, so we're gonna do dot 20. 192.168.1.20, and hit tab. The subnet mask, the standard default is fine, and we don't need to do anything with the DNS. We'll click okay. Okay, and let's go ahead and just close this out. Now what we need to do is open up our control application and select network control. And it automatically comes up with the default address. We're gonna click connect. It's gonna take a couple seconds because it's got a couple of handshakes to get through. And then right here, this light just turned green. That let us know that we're connected. So let's go ahead and go to PC 10. Now we've got the LED came to 10, and we've got our Mario Kart on the monitor over here. Let's go back to PC1. All right, so now we have the two devices talking to each other. Now the next step is to program the KVM with that new static IP for our broader network here. So we're going to settings, and our IP was 10.1.20.250. Remember, yours may be completely different. And our gateway is going to be our router, which is 10.1.20.1 almost always is going to end in a dot one. Click apply and you'll see the query screen pops up here and it shows our new address. Now really important you have to turn off the KVM and turn it back on in order for the new IP to take effect. Let's go ahead and unplug from the front of the KVM. You can turn that back on. And while that's booting up, let's just come over here and we'll disconnect that. Let's go ahead and fix our laptop and put it back to the way it was in the beginning. Right click, open network settings, change adapter options, right click ethernet, go to TCP IP4, go back to DHCP, let's close that out. Now that should be all set and back to the way it was. Now take note that we're actually connected to Wi-Fi, so you will be able to control the KVM anywhere you are with you have Wi-Fi on your network. All right, so let's connect the KVM to our broader network here, our white ethernet cable, and let's update the IP address to the new static IP, 10.1.20.250, and cross our fingers here. Let's connect. Give it a couple seconds, and there you go, easy peasy. So let's hit PC 10, just to make sure we got the Mario Kart here, and we've got LED says 10, so we know that's working, and that's it. So if you're still having problems with setting this up on your network, we've made a completely different troubleshooting video, so you might wanna check that out. All right, we're gonna go ahead and come back, and we're gonna set up an RS-232 connection to the KVM. It's a little bit more simple than this.